Hello everyone. So in this uh, second video, uh, we're going to look at actually what this RDF looks like when you present it to, uh, uh, to a system, right, to a computer. So it needs to be machine interpretable uh, and it looks a bit like code, uh, but it also is not that uh, complicated. So specifically what we'll do is we'll look at uh, RDF Turtle um, uh, and its syntax. Okay, without further ado, let's have a look. So um, uh, as a reminder, uh, we talked about RDF, uh, this uh, standardized way of representing data on the web. It's a graph data model and it uses triples to say things about the world, right? Subject, predicate, object or thing relationship thing. Uh, and then in the subject and object and predicate position, we use these things called resources. That's why it's called the resource def uh, description framework. And then these are things that we want to talk about and we denote them by URIs. We identify them by these, these globally uh, unique URIs. And then what I didn't talk about, but what you can do is that specifically for this thing or object uh, place, you can actually also have values. So you can have strings or numbers or things like that. Subject and predicates are always resources, but objects can be either resources when you point at another thing or values or literals when you point at a value. Right, and we didn't talk about named graphs, but that's actually when you have multiple triples uh, together. Right, so looking at uh, some triples, so this is uh, a little uh, a knowledge graph. Uh, right, we see a triple here, Shanghai population and then some value, or Shanghai located in the People's Republic of China, and there's triples going uh, all kinds of directions. Right, so now you see here a mini graph consisting of a bunch of triples. Let's see how many. So we have a triple here. Right? And we could write the same thing down like this, like right? SJTU, name, Shanghai, uh, Shanghai Xiaotong University. Uh, and there's a triple here, and there's a triple here, and a triple here, and a triple here. Right? So there's a, uh, this graph is made up uh, of these, uh, what is it, eight uh, different triples. And they're uh, listed here. Right? And in green, you can see the, the predicates, which correspond to the arrows. And in blue, you see the objects, which sometimes are resources and sometimes are Value, so we denote them here by squares and uh, ellipses. Um, and here you see them that actually we put quotes around them. Right? So that's how we differentiate between them. Okay, so there's this is uh, let's say almost already uh, uh, RDF, machine readable RDF. But there's a few things that we need to do to make it actually machine readable and uh, present let's say the most simple syntax for RDF, which is not turtle yet, but it's called n triples. And triples basically you just state all the triples and for every subject predicate or object you uh, if it's a resource so a thing with a uri you put it in brackets right and again here we don't uh, write out all the http stuff but you can imagine that that's uh, uh, would be in this and this and this place right so brackets around resources and then if it's a value so it can only occur in the last space we put these quotes around it right so these are values uh, numbers strings, uh, names of things, etc. Right, and this is machine readable. This is the n triple format. And you can just load your, uh, your syntax here. So there's a, actually a slightly more useful one that is called RDF Turtle and it looks a lot like this. And it's like this. Right? And the nice thing is, I, what I can do is, for example, I say now two times, I say something about Shanghai. For example, that there's a name and it's a population. Um, and I can uh, omit the second one because I can say, well, we're still talking about Shanghai, and I do that with this semicolon, right? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I'll put all the things here, right? So these semicolons they allow you to say, well, data Shanghai located in People's Republic of China, right? One, two, three, uh, and I do a semicolon, and that means that the, the, this line, name Shanghai, etc., uh, etc., et is uh, still about this subject. Right, so it's a bit basically a shorthand. I'm not going to go too much in detail into the exact syntax. We also have things like commas and semicolons. Um, uh, it's it's not that complicated, and you can actually have a look at what it work, what it looks like uh, if you go to this website. Uh, one thing that you can also do in Turtle is to have Unicode characters, which of course is nice if you're talking in this case about uh, Chinese uh, uh, things. Right, so we, ha we can actually include those in the data. And what is really nice is that we can do these abbreviations. I showed them already before, right? So HTTP Rags Museum can be abbreviated by Rags. So what we can do is on top, in top of our turtle file, we can define these, what are called namespaces. And basically they're just sort of shorthands. So I say, I define a shorthand, we call it data. We just made it up. And then you identify the URI of where all the data stuff is. 
and then here you declare a resource data Shanghai and that expands to the whole URI so it expands to in this case HTTP colon slash slash data dot example dot org slash Shanghai right so that's uh, that's what it looks like so you can group triples with using these uh, semicolons and, uh, and commas Right, and there's other syntaxes other than these n triples and the turtle so that's also nice so rdf is a standardized data format and there's a few standardized syntaxes that basically are interchangeable so you can re really easily write one form to the other uh, so we're not going to go into detail on that okay so one nice thing is that uh, now that we have uris i remember that i told you you could actually point to uh, another uri or you can just reuse other people's uh, predicates, right? And that is nice because if, let's say, I think I'm a little museum and I think, well, the Rijksmuseum notion of a painting is good enough for me, I can reuse their notion of a painting by just using their URI whenever I want to talk about a painting. Right? Or if I have the notion of created, right? so X created Y, then I might say, well, I'm, I come up with my own definition, so I do example uh, uh, colon created, or I reuse someone else's uh, 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 triple, uh, sorry, a resource. <laughs> I, re I reuse someone else's URI, and that means there's a sort of social implication, social semantics, that says, well, if I reuse your URI, that means that I adhere to your interpretation, your meaning of that, uh, that thing, that property, that resource, that class, that instance. Right? So they're a bit like software libraries, if you know that, so you can just sort of import software libraries in your little Python program or C program and vocabularies are like data libraries right so they allow you to reuse other people's notions of specific things and well what is out there there's all kinds of vocabularies out there you can actually uh, uh, see them for example at the lov.linkdata.s uh, right so there's uh, for example the fov uh, vocabulary which defines all kinds of relations that people uh, might have uh, so for example the fov knows one is that I know uh, you, I can actually express it, and I can say instead of coming up with my own uh, uh, predicate, which is the uh, the resource that I have in the middle of the triple, I can actually reuse an existing one. I just use HTTP colon slash slash org slash knows. Right? And now this is nice because everybody that publishes data that uses this fov basically play by the same fov rules, and already I have some data integration if I reuse other people's URIs. And then there's other data sets that are also out there. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll also look at if you have some data, how you can actually query that. And also we will look at how to actually produce linked data from tables. Thank you very much.